I'm going to hit a couple areas. So I'd like to set a little bit of context. And, and Dan, this, this might sound a little bit familiar, but, you know, we're 15 years into the cloud. And, you know, most 15-year-olds are, are not that mature, but they're out of those kind of those gangly, you know, 13-year-old age that, uh, that, that all of us uh, were in. And the, the great thing is, is, is choice that's out there and the amount of, of partners that's out there is, is immense. AWS has the clear uh, uh, advantage in, in IaaS, around 50% uh, market share. There is the past in the SaaS market that uh, other people uh, have uh, as, as well. Uh, not a whole lot of talk about multi-cloud, but I wanted to get a little bit of editorial. This is less about AWS and more about my belief systems, is that <clears throat> multi-cloud, just like hybrid, is not debatable. Uh, companies use multiple clouds for, for IaaS. In fact, I even talked to a Fortune 1000 CEO that didn't use more than one cloud vendor for, for IaaS uh, in past. So really the only debate is how you manage those, that having separate uh, 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 DevSec network ops teams per, per cloud. Uh, you can check out some of the stuff I've been talking about on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn about that, but... Uh, that's the one area I'd love to see more definitive messaging from uh, AWS. And listen, this is not the shill show. Uh, there are pluses and minuses with every every show and every vendor. And it's easier to do this when that vendor has 50% market share. Uh, AWS is the market share leader in AI, AI and ML. Uh, and I felt that the company's doing a really good job uh, answering the questions or the challenges of data sprawl, quality, governance, lineage, security, lack of reuse of even AI algorithms and, and learnings, uh, auditability, complexity, transparency, cost, and performance. Uh, I do think they need a little bit more investment in on-prem. You cannot get these services uh, as part of their uh, hybrid uh, solution. AWS and IaaS compute, I mean, not only are they the market share leader, but they have the broadest view holistically from left to right and then top to bottom. You want the highest performance, the highest performance per watt, we got it. You want the lowest cost, uh, we got that. A lot of our own homegrown stuff. A lot of different types of compute, even though we like to smush them together, general compute from a CPU, inference, training, and even network offload. Um, they provide their own processing units, but also uh, have uh, leading instances from AMD, NVIDIA, Habana, uh, and Intel. And, you know, I know Habana is part of Intel, but I don't want people to confuse that they only use Intel CPUs. Habana is very much an Intel-owned uh, training part. Uh, probably most impressive, though, is what they've done with their homegrown silicon. And we had an incredible uh, speaker uh, on the 6.5. Gotti, check it out if, if you can. Talking about uh, Graviton, Inferentia, Nitro, and, and Tranium. Dan, 10 years ago, I would have never said that a vendor that did anything other than chips could do good chips. But AWS does its own good chips. And it's not just containers, it's VMs, it's, it's containers, uh, and it's serverless. So uh, props to the company on that. It, it must be very hard to compete with AWS on, on compute, uh, because no matter how you pull this thing, uh, they seem and appear to have the lead. By the way, this is what is, is, is making the uh, alternative co uh, companies like Ampere Computing, so popular with Google Cloud uh, and also with, with Azure uh, and Oracle Cloud. But again, I'm going to leave. There's a lot more oxygen I left you uh, in the room, uh, Dan. Yeah, this is one of those topics that we could have done an entire show on had we not done seven hours almost of recordings with AWS folks on the 6.5, I would have said we should, but instead what we should do is put in the show notes the links to all of them so you can check them out because we did. We talked containers, 
We talked homegrown silicon. We talked sustainability. We talked about AI and ML a lot. And if those are things that you're interested in, I can't beat it here in a, in a few minutes. What I will say is there's a couple of themes that are really important and noteworthy. The first theme is clouds are not all the same. And there seems to be this overarching desire to make IaaS because it's some to some extent when you're just talking compute network and storage, you can create what's called this con this concept of commodity, and it's not a commodity. A AWS between this, what Pat talked about with his homegrown silicon, uh, with the homegrown silicon, when you talk about with their AI ML services, when you talk about the overarching um, services for you know different instances in compute with their hybrid cloud approach you get differentiation across the business and that makes the company different than azure and it's different than google it's different than oracle and by the way all kind of approach the pricing different too of consumption and how businesses are going to be able to move to these clouds and stay with these clouds so noting that is aws has the most comprehensive suite especially when it comes to the infrastructure itself um, but the extensibility, like you said, of like they, like AIML, a lot of people say mention another cloud, which by the way has done a very good job for being the leader in data services. But and it's and they're actually not yet, and we'll see how, where that actually lands. Um, the second thing is multi-cloud is is here. Period. Uh, you use this stat a bunch of times in some of our videos, Pat. But you know, it's like a hundred percent of big enterprises are multi-cloud now. And I'm not just talking about multi-cloud because they happen to be using a SaaS application somewhere in the org that sits on another public cloud. Every company is doing some version of multi-cloud for governance, for data residency and sovereignty, for um, redundancy. There's a lot of resiliency. There's a lot of different reasons that that's being done, but it is being done. And I think AWS has arrived there. And that's something that took a while for the company. It wasn't fast to get to. It was slow to get to hybrid cloud. It was slow to get to multi because, you know, obviously uh, this goes back to the cloud denier era. And you and I have talked about this quite a bit. There was a period of time where the growth was so fast that people actually believed that every workload would be in the public cloud. And we're finding out that's just not going to be the case. And so AWS is doing a good job of building a diversified portfolio. So I want to talk about one more thing, because I know you love this topic, because I want to talk about sustainability. Um, you know, sustainability is not only near and dear to your heart, Pat, but it's near and dear to the hearts of most organizations. And it's worth noting, um, it's worth noting for this, you know, everybody out there that we, you know, I care about sustainability through the lens of economical, meaningful, and measurable. So we had a problem over the last couple of years where greenwashing became prevalent. Uh, a lot of market texture, a lot of talking about green for the sake of being um, you know, using it to drive business momentum. But what I like about what, what the company's done with their water positive announcement and also what the company is doing with their homegrown silicon is they're actually building technology that meaningfully reduces the utilization of power in the data center, which is going to be massive with the growth of compute. And they're trying to do something meaningful to the world, which we just left Las Vegas, Pat. And by the way, there's a lake drying up there. <laughs> and it's a pretty significant problem that we got all these great hotels, but we might not have water. So, you know, AWS is doing a lot of things well. It was a great event, high energy. You and I, you know, you couldn't help but smile seeing all the geeks running around because the, the event, like we said, 75% geeks and 25% wannabe geeks. 